Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1. We continue our series on the person and work of Christ, considering the various metaphors used in the scripture to give us further description and understanding of the person of Christ and his work. Genesis 15, 1, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, do not fear, Abram, I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. When you look at that word, word, after these things, the word, perhaps you would be drawn to think of the beginning of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Of course, a reference to Christ. And that is exactly what we have here. Uh, this is the Lord. It's Christ and his eternal state, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. He appeared often in the Old Testament, various times, various circumstances. And here we have him speaking directly to Abraham, encouraging Abraham, do not fear, why? Why shouldn't he be afraid? Well, because Christ, the Lord, is his shield. Perhaps you might think, well, that's good for Abraham. What about us? Well, certainly we can be included. Uh, we are related to Abraham in a sense. He was the father of the faithful. And um, we have that in Romans 4.11. In fact, why don't you turn there? <clears throat> Romans 4.11. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while uncircumcised. uncircumcised. This is now concerning Abraham that he might be the father of all who believe without being circumcised, that righteousness might be reckoned to them. And we have a concise statement of the doctrine <clears throat> that we have in view, and it is this, that our Lord Jesus Christ is a shield to all true believers. He is a shield. What do we mean when we speak of Christ being a shield? What is a shield? Well, it's... Um, piece of metal, durable, usually carried in the left hand and arm to give protection to the body while the weapon is being held in the right hand. It's a defense, it's a means of defense against harm. Do we need a shield? Why would we need a shield? Are we in danger? We certainly are. We need protection. We need defense day and night in our Christian life. <clears throat> we have enemies. 
the world, our own flesh, and the devil. Any one of those enemies would be enough, more than enough. But we have three. And they are constantly making war against the believer. So we need a shield of protection in the battle. Ephesians 6 makes it very clear we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we have the need of an arm, of armor, of a shield. Now, what kind of a shield do we need? Well, one that's effective against the kind of enemy that we have. Obviously, a shield of metal is not going to protect us against our flesh or against Satan or against the world. We need something quite different for the protection of our own soul. What are the properties then of this shield who is for us the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me give you a few descriptions of this shield. First of all, he is a living shield, and that's important. Other shields are what we would consider not to be living. They're pieces of metal or brass, and whoever has it makes use of it effectively. However, our Lord is alive and he himself becomes our shield to protect us from all kinds of dangers night or day or in any given situation where protection is needed. He is a living shield. He arose again from the dead and he lives forever at the right hand of God to make intercession for us. And he is our shield. Being a living shield, he's also what we would consider to be a lasting shield. Other shields wear out, become damaged, and need to be replaced. In the days of Solomon, the shields were sometimes even made of gold, uh, reflecting his wealth. Later they were replaced with brass. But Hebrews tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. Think of that, he never changes, neither for the better or for the worse. He is perfect, he is God, he is the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Other shields wear out, Christ Never. Third, he is what we might say an encompassing shield. Other shields are just for one side only. That's the front. No protection for the back, so you better not turn and run. 
because you have no protection in the back. Uh, it's not encompassing. It can only defend wherever the shield happens to be placed, the position of it. But we are encompassed on all sides. We have surrounding protection. Whenever Job was being tempted by Satan, Satan says, hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Satan knew Job was protected all around, not just on one side or to the front or back, but all around. Fourth, he is an impenetrable shield, a shield which cannot be pierced. It is totally effective against every weapon of the enemy. The armor bearer in a battle would have had perhaps a good or shield some others maybe not of such good quality, but many times those shields were defective and there could be a way of being attacked because the shield was too small, it was made of defective materials, it could only cover one spot at a time. Not so with Christ, who is our shield. Then another description would be that he alone, he alone is our shield. There's no need for others. Like in the kings of the Old Testament, there was times of warfare and they had different size shields, different materials. We just have one, and that's Christ. That's all that's needed, none but Christ. He alone is our shield. And you remember there in Ephesians 6, where Paul talks about the spiritual warfare, and he exhorts, take up the shield of faith, the shield, not this or that one, the shield of faith, whereby you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, not just some of them, all of them. That's important because Christ has the power to defend the true believer. Closer related to it would be, last of all, in terms of description of the shield, he is all sufficient. There are various intensities of warfare. There are some times when the enemy attacks us more severe, more aggressively, than in other times. But that matters not. Christ is all sufficient for any and every intensity or kind of attack that our enemies might bring against us. Now, what are we to do about it? We have a shield. What should we do? Well, first of all, it brings a great deal of comfort to us to know that Christ is our shield. And you know, if you really just spend the time and sit down and meditate on that and think about that, it's a source of comfort because we are, for the most part, dealing with an unseen enemy. 
how much more do we need a shield of protection against an enemy that is unseen? It's a, the enemy's effectiveness is many times based on the fact that the enemy is unseen. It brings a great deal of comfort to think that he is on duty, so to speak, 24 hours a day. We have protection. Now, there are broader areas in which God's people need protection. And it would be a source of comfort to us to know and to think of, of it that the Lord Jesus Christ is a shield not only to the individual believer, but is a shield to the church. We have protection against the enemy as a corporate body of believers. And that's important. We have the universal church, or what we call sometimes the invisible church, uh, made up of all true believers, those who are presently here, but those who have gone on to be with the Lord. So we are part of that universal church in a broad manner of speaking. We also have a smaller church, a part of the universal church, that would be the local church. But Christ protects the church, whether it be a local body of believers or whether it be the broader universal church throughout the earth, be it in China, Africa, India, the church is throughout all the earth. But the Lord is a shield to his people, to his church. No. Whatever the circumstance might be of an individual church, whatever the protection it might need, that protection will come to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we've already made reference to this, but to emphasize it again, we have need as individuals every day for protection. Initially, as we come into the faith and saving relationship with God, we are protected now from the wrath of God. Before being saved, there was no protection from God's wrath. We were exposed to God's wrath. But as we come to Christ and he becomes our personal savior, then God's wrath is abated against us. Why? Because Christ bore that wrath. He suffered the wrath of God against us as punishment for sin. So in that sense, immediately Christ becomes our shield from being exposed to the wrath of God. Now, as the believer begins his walk with Christ and the enemy seeks to destroy him, to detour him from the straight and narrow path, to bring him into um, sin, well, of course, each individual needs that protection. When Paul was tempted on occasion, because of his weakness, a physical weakness probably, and he prayed and asked God to remove it, God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. 
in this particular situation. So, again, we see grace being ministered to us through Christ, um, defends us against the ultimate damage that things could do to us, perhaps even sickness. Why? We have the grace of God in us and through us working in us. And whatever the situation might be that we would need that specific protection. Uh, Christ is our shield from the violence of men, the violence of mankind. Um, because we can be in, even in danger for that and not realize it. Christ can protect us unknowingly from physical danger. I'm a firm believer in that because I believe that God orders providentially our timing of when we are even at a certain intersection where we might be broadsided by someone who read a red light. And Christ can so order our situation that we were not in that intersection at the time. That's nothing less than Christ being our shield, our defender. Even in times of what we would call disaster, storms, tornadoes, floods, God can and does uniquely shield and protect his people. Now, let's think a moment. What a sad condition those are in who have no shield. No shield of protection. Exposed to sin, to the flesh, to the world, to Satan. Without any protection whatsoever from the onslaught of the enemy. And how we need to be thankful for the shield that we have and God's protection. How we ought to be concerned about those who have no protection whatsoever, who need to be brought into a right relationship with God. Beyond that, we can be thankful every day for the way in which Christ protects us. And we can be thankful even when we're not aware of that protection. Many times we are aware. Many times we're not. But it's a matter of giving thanks to God in our time of prayer. Making effort to say, Lord, I want to thank you for your protection upon me today. Michael came early and this morning and we had time to have prayer before we came and we prayed, Lord, protect us as we travel to church and back home, protect those who will be coming from danger. Wonderful protection that God can grant to us every day. We can have great confidence in our Lord. I want us to look up a couple of scriptures. We're going to uh, close our lesson uh, quite a bit early. This has been one of our short lessons, but I don't usually like to double up and consider another uh, metaphor of our Lord, uh, just one in each lesson. But turn with me to Psalm 5. 
verses 11 to 12. I found two passages in the Psalms that were very helpful. Psalm 5, 11 to 12. But let all who take refuge in thee be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. And mayest thou shelter them, that those who love thy name may exalt thee. For it is thou who dost bless the righteous man, O Lord. Thou dost surround him with favor as with a shield. What a blessed privilege to be surrounded, to be surrounded with favor like a shield. And that is a privilege and a blessing of God's people. Turn with me to Psalm 144 and verse 2, showing again the use of the shield in Scripture. Verse, Psalm 144, verse 2, My loving kindness and my fortress, my stronghold, and my deliverer, speaking of the Lord, my shield, and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Christ is our shield. And for that, we can certainly be ever forever thankful for that ministry that Christ undertakes for the believer. He is our shield. Well, let's pray. Our gracious God, we thank you for this portion of your scripture instructing us as to the place that Christ has in our life as a shield. Father, no doubt we have no awareness of how many times we have been protected from the onslaught of our enemies. Satan himself, our own remaining sin, the pressure that the world brings upon us, the dangers that lurk about that are unseen, but known and seen to you. And you're able through your sovereign providences to be a shield even in the timing of events of our life. And so Lord, we lift up our hearts today and give you thanks for being our shield. And we take great comfort in knowing that day in and day out, you are an effective, living, everlasting, impenetrable shield in our life. We praise you and we thank you for that. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.